Trump's anticipated win in Iowa, a major step in his attempt to reclaim the White House. KTVU political reporter Greg Lee live tonight in the newsroom and has been following the results. This was fairly quick here, Greg. Yeah, Mike, you could say that. 31 minutes from the time caucuses opened. That is all it took for the AP and Fox News to call that race in Iowa, project, for, project former President Trump as the winner. All the polls ahead of tonight pointing to a landslide victory for the former president as the first votes were cast in this Republican-nominated contest. In fact, some speeches in support of other candidates had not even been delivered at some caucus locations. The questions now, what will be his margin of victory and what percentage of the total vote will he get? Keep in mind, the largest margin of victory in Iowa history was 12 points by Bob Dole in 1988. Mr. Trump has been polling at nearly triple that leading up to tonight. He spoke here in support of his own nomination just moments before the race was called, as you can see, where he was already looking ahead to the general election against President Biden. We are beating him because we have to get him out. He's destroying our country. He is totally destroying our country. Now, the other thing to watch tonight as results continue to roll in is the battle for second place. Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis have been duking it out. Haley recently overtook the runner-up spot from DeSantis in a new poll. Both campaigns need a strong performance tonight to set them up for the rest of these primaries. And a second place finish here is key. DeSantis, with his expectations, has put all his eggs into the basket that is Iowa. So he doesn't want to lose by a record-setting margin. And he doesn't want Nikki Haley to be close. Because then when you move to New Hampshire, you're moving to a state that is different, a, a state where independent or unaffiliated voters can cross over, or even Democrats can cross over. New Hampshire's primary, the next contest, just a week away. Now, the other thing we're watching as votes are continuing to be tallied in Iowa is the impact the bitter cold will have on turnout. The wind chill making it feel like 30 to 40 below zero in some places. So we will continue to watch that and bring you those results as we get them. Mike, Julie. Hey, Greg, if Governor DeSantis does not come in second here in Iowa, is there a strong possibility that's it for the campaign? Yeah, and if you asked his campaign if that situation happened, they would yeah. probably tell you they'll continue to fight. But he is not polling well in New Hampshire. He has not been appealing to independent voters like Nikki Haley has done. So he will likely stay in for New Hampshire. But if he comes in third there, third tonight, then the writing may be on the wall for the campaign to reevaluate what it has left in the tank because they are spending a lot of money and they had all their eggs in the Iowa basket tonight. So if he does not come in second, they're going to have to take a long, hard look on how they move forward. All right, Greg Lee, live tonight in the newsroom with the latest out of Iowa. Greg, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Well, for more on today's Iowa caucus, we spoke earlier today with John Dennis, cha chairman of the San Francisco Republican Party. He has been to a caucus event and says it's very different process than what we're used to here in California. The caucuses are a process where you go in, you um, listen to surrogates for the can candidate or the candidate him or herself, and then uh, you know come together and make a make a, a decision on who you're going to vote for. What's funny is many of the caucuses are just simply like torn up pieces of paper that saying, you, yeah, write it's, to, it's, you write the name it's of your old candidate. School, yeah. Oh, it's great. Dennis goes on to say, unlike California's primary, where you go in and you vote and then you leave, at the caucus, it's like a gathering of neighbors who discuss who they want to see as the top candidate. A new poll shows former President Trump is in a strong position to capture all of California's delegates. A UC Berkeley IGS poll found two-thirds of California Republican voters plan to vote for Mr. Trump in the state's upcoming primary. Mr. Trump's share of the likely voters in that poll has increased since October. 11 percent of California Republicans say they plan to vote for Nikki Haley. Ron DeSantis came in third with 8 percent, followed by Vivek Ramaswamy at 3 percent. The California primary is set for March. March 5th.